since you've started using IFR code registration, how have you felt um, when you're making the measurements? How easy is it to make them and how easy is it to interpret the findings on the screen? It's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the beauty of it is that it does not require a pullback device. So it actually follows, you, you have to do fluoroscopy while you do it. So mm -hmm. let's say it takes 10 or 15 seconds while you do the pullback. So you have to stay on fluoro for that duration. Okay. But basically the computer um, understands how the wire moves because you have the radio opaque part, which obviously is a defined distance, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so it can um, use that information to co-register it to the angiogram. Right. And so based on that, you can also make length measurements, right? So you can also see, okay, if I put a stent that is, I don't know, 28 millimeters, I would basically cover this amount of, of territory, of physiology territory, if you will, right. and would recover my pressure to X number. So it's actually a very, very, you know, neat way of predicting what's going to happen before you go in and do the angioplasty. Okay, so you're, you're using it to interrogate the vessel, you're then pulling the wire back to map out the disease, and then you're actually making measurements to know the length of the disease, as well as what the potential gain would be from a physiological point of view. Right. Yeah, right. it's absolutely fantastic. And obviously you have been involved, I think, in, in one of the major tri studies looking at the um, before and after. Because mm -hmm. then the question is, well, isn't there crosstalk between the lesions, yes, right. and if so, how much? We know with FFR that's a problem, right? Yeah, so the, the, the complexity of this is um, really quite tricky to be able to work out on the fly. And when you're performing a uh, pullback assessment uh, under maximal hyperemia with an adenosine infusion, I think we, we find that we end up making multiple runs. We have to give adenosine many times, right. and uh, you have to repeat the measurement every time you place a stent. Uh, because what you predicted will not be what you uh, actually gain. But what we found with IFR is that that seems to remove all of that doubt and you can plan in upfront and in advance before you've actually performed your stenting. Right. And in your study, right, the error rate from predicting to afterwards measured was... It was very small. So 1%, one percent, a little over 1%, one right? Percent. So our study was particularly small, uh, it's very complex disease. What we found in our clinical experience has been using it in more routine cases, uh, the accuracy is very, very good. Um, naturally, you have to have very good technique, uh, and there's always uh, pitfalls that you can fall into. As long as you're using the appropriate approach, I think you get good results. Right. Yeah.